In this video, we are going to have a look at how to install Kali Linux on a Windows 11 machine by using VirtualBox. So VirtualBox is a free hypervisor from Oracle. It has been around for a while and hence it is very safe to use. In order to install VirtualBox, go to virtualbox.org, click on downloads on the left hand side and pick the appropriate host that you have. Since I have a Windows 11 machine, I will click on Windows host, wait for the virtual box to be downloaded onto my machine. So the current version that we have is 7.0.12. It's about 100 meg in size, so it has been downloaded. The next piece of software that we need along with the virtual box are the virtual box extension pack. Click on that one. So it's the same one for all the operating systems that you have. So two pieces of software for VirtualBox. It's been downloaded onto my downloads folder. So that's the main VirtualBox hypervisor software. And the second one is the extension pack. What we need next is the actual ISO file of the Kali Linux operating system. To do that, go to kali.org on your browser. Click on download. It brings up the download options for Kali Linux. We have two of those. One is the installer images. This is where we download the ISO file that is required for installing the operating system. So if I click on recommended, I have three options. One is a 64-bit Kali Linux for Windows. Another one is 32-bit. And the third one is for Mac machines. So since I am running VirtualBox on a Windows 11 machine, which is 64-bit, I will go with the 64-bit Kali and you can click on this particular icon to download the Kali Linux operating system. It is around four gig in size, as you can see, and it will take a while. I have already downloaded the software onto my downloads folder. It's over here. So I will cancel the download. If we go back, we had a second option of installing Kali or working with Kali, which is by using virtual machines. If I click on that, what we see over here is a pre-built operating system, which you can use within VirtualBox. So it comes pre-installed with Kali Linux and all the components. You can just use it as if it is a fresh machine that you have bought from, from a shop, like a Windows 11 machine, a Windows 11 laptop that you have bought. You switch it on and it's there. We don't want to do that because we want to have the experience of setting it up ourselves by using VirtualBox so that later on, you can install other flavors of Linux, like maybe Ubuntu or Debian or any other ones, or even Windows machines. So let's go back. So the one that we need is installer images, 64 bit for me, and click on the option to download. It's about four gig in size. I already have it in my machine. So let's go into the downloads folder. So here it is, all three pieces of software. So in order to install VirtualBox, double click on the piece of software that we have already downloaded. Click on yes. Wait for it to load. Click next. Go with the default options that you have on the screen. The default location that we have is in program files inside the Oracle folder. If you do want to have it in a custom location, you can use the browse button and change the location to the one of your choice. Click next. It's warning that as part of the installation, it's going to create virtual box, virtual network adapters, which is fine. We need that for the machines to have access to the network and to the internet. So click on yes. And click yes again for installing the missing dependencies for installing VirtualBox. And now click on install. It's going to take less than a minute while it downloads all the new files, installs all the files onto the machine, updates the registry with the values, creates the shortcuts on the desktop, you know, all the usual business of installing a piece of software, which we are very familiar with. So let's wait for it to finish install. Here it is, so it has been installed. So the version that we have currently is 7.0.12, which is the latest version at the time of recording the video. Let's uncheck the box and click finish so that we can install the extension pack. It will Open up the virtual box as part of the install. Let's wait for it. So this is virtual box, the big window that we have. And here is the extension pack. It's asking us whether we want to have the extension pack installed. 
normally you would have install i have already installed it on my machine and hence it's giving me the option to reinstall in your case you will have install just click on that scroll down so that we can agree to the license click on i agree and click on yes and that's it the extension pack has been installed it doesn't give you a confirmation prompt so we can close the virtual box software that we have so so far we have downloaded the virtual box software also the extension pack and we have installed both on our windows 11 machine so we have the base operating system which is windows 11 which is our host and we have installed the hypervisor which facilitates in running a virtual machine on our windows 11 desktop or laptop that we have we also have downloaded the kali linux operating system iso file now we need to set up kali linux by using virtualbox in order to do that let's open up virtualbox by double clicking the shortcut that you have you can also pick it up from the start menu if you don't see it over here you can click on all apps go into oracle so hit for o or you can even search over here let's go down to o oracle vm virtualbox expand it and here it is so it opens up the same window so we need to create a new virtual machine so in order to do that let's click on new as you can see i already have a couple of windows machines running let's set up the kali linux by using virtualbox click on new to create a new virtual machine let's give it a proper name let's say kali linux Pick the folder where you want the virtual machine related files, the VDI files to be installed, which is the virtual hard disk. I have selected C virtual machines. If you want to pick a different one, you can click on the arrow and click on other and browse to the location. Pick the ISO file as the third step. So click on other, go to the downloads folder and we have Kali Linux. And it pre-selects the type of the operating system that we are going to install. So it picks it up as a Linux machine and it, it thinks it's an Ubuntu one, which is fine in our case. Now click on next. Now here we set the base memory or the amount of memory that we will have for this virtual machine and the, the number of CPUs. Two gig is fine. It's the minimum that is recommended, but let's go with a slightly higher version so that it's a bit more seamless in performance um, let's give it two operating two virtual cpus this depends entirely on the amount of hardware resources you have on your machine if you're low on hardware resources you can bring it down to two gig for memory and just one processor click on next now this is where we create the virtual disk on which the operating system will be installed by default it's picking up a 25 gig hard drive um, the recommended option is to go for 80 so let's hit 80 don't click on pre-allocate full size that means that it will create a vdi file with 80 gig in size which means you will lose the actual hard disk space that you have on your desktop or laptop so uncheck that what we are doing over here is saying that the maximum amount of hard disk that you can use for this virtual machine is 80 gig but it doesn't provision a full-blown 80 gig hard disk from the get-go it provisions a basic one and as you have more and more files you download some things on your Kali Linux machine it expands the hard disk that you have within VirtualBox so let's go with 80 gig do not select this option click on next here we have a summary of what we have done so far so the name of the machine is Kali Linux this is where we are installing the Kali Linux operating system so see virtual machines and Kali Linux folder the location of the ISO file it's a 64-bit ISO and we have 4 gig of RAM and two virtual CPUs and we're going with an 80 gig hard disk and we are not pre-allocating the full size of 80 gig. Click on finish. That finishes the setup of Kali Linux virtual machine within VirtualBox. Now we need to actually install Kali Linux so that we can start using it. In order to do that, let's Go down the drop down menu, we then start, go for a normal start. Make sure that Kali Linux is selected if you have more number of virtual machines already within VirtualBox. Wait for the VM to boot up. All right. So we have a few options. Let's go with the graphical install. 
click next or press the enter key it loads the ISO file and it starts so here comes the installation options within the actual install process so let's expand it a bit so that it's a bit more clear for you guys so the language that we need is English in my case so that's pre-selected if you're going with a different one just choose it from the the menu that you have click on continue again location uh, we'll go with United Kingdom uh, again it's all optional click continue I'm going with uh, British English as the keyboard it's detecting the hardware and scanning the media that we have it's loading all the additional components that it needs the good thing with various flavors of Linux installations is that it is pretty quick to install compared to Windows and it's a bit more secure all right so detecting the network configuring the network that we have trying to stick the IP address configurations it's trying to pick a IP address from the DHCP so this is where we give the name of the machine so this is your host name so you could have anything so I could I could just say Kali for the time being let's put it in caps click continue we can leave the domain name as blank because this is going to be a standalone machine give a new username so in my case uh, I'll go with say Superman or maybe Tech Shuffle click continue okay username should be in lowercase it automatically fixes that give a new password let's go with a secure password that I have re-enter the password and click continue it's picking up the disks that we have configured the VDI and setting up the partitions that it needs to install the Kali Linux go with the guided use entire disk option which is uh, good for beginners this is the one that we have all files in one partition is good enough recommended for new users as it says over there click on continue and finish partitioning and write changes to the disk select that one option and click on continue make sure that this is checked yes for partitioning the disks continue now it's installing the base system as you can see on the screen let's fast forward a bit so that you don't have to sit for the whole installation to be done I'll be back once this is completed all right it took about a couple of minutes to install the full operating system and this is the screen that you get once the installation has been completed so let's go with the pre-selected options and click continue to progress with the installation and it's selecting and installing all the softwares that we have selected a minute and a half let's fast, fast forward and come back when it is finished all right it took about 10 to 12 minutes in my case to come up to the stage when we had finished installing all the softwares now it is prompting us to install the grub bootloader so that's the bootloader for Linux we need to select yes so that we can load and the device that we have is this one so we don't have to go for enter device manually just select the hard disk that we have which is dev slash sda and click continue let it install the grub should be pretty quick and finishing the installation setting up the users and the passwords that we gave as part of the installation wizard in the beginning while we are waiting for the installation to complete um, just a quick heads up I will be releasing new series of videos which is tailored for complete beginners in the Linux world so it is by far not at all intended to anyone who is working as a system admin or as a Linux admin for a company big or small it is purely intended for someone who has no experience in Linux and who is venturing into the Linux world for the first time doesn't know anything about Linux doesn't even know in what Kali Linux means so Kali Linux is a popular Linux flavor especially for 
people who are into ethical hacking, penetration testing, those kind of things. There are various flavors of Linux, including Kali. So there is um, the popular Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian. There's a lot of versions of uh, Linux. So Kali is a good one to start with. Ubuntu is another one to have. So whenever you go for a job interview or whenever you are aiming for a job, if you do have Linux skills in your resume, that goes a long way. Even if you are not an expert Linux user, if you have basic understanding of Linux, that is a big plus. All right, our installation has finished. Let's click on continue to reboot the machine. It's cleaning up the installation, removing all the files that we don't need and it's going to reboot the machine. So this is VirtualBox. So that's the grub. And let's just wait for it to load. So here it is asking for uh, the username and the password that we specified as part of the installation. So the one that we went for was Tech Shuffle in my case. And let me put my password. Hopefully I can remember. Yep, I can. So it's just logging me in for the first time into Kali. There you go. So that's Kali Linux all running on a Windows 11 machine using VirtualBox. All free. VirtualBox is free. Kali Linux is free as well. So if you have a Windows 11 machine, you can easily install Kali Linux as a VM so you don't have to dual boot. Dual booting is an option when which you have two operating systems installed into the bare metal. So, you know, into your um, laptop or desktop hard disk itself and you can choose which one to boot from. Whereas in our case, we are running it as a virtual machine. So our Windows 11 works as is, as and when you need to play with Kali Linux, you just come into VirtualBox and then start the machine. And there you go, full-blown Kali Linux, all for you. So thank you for watching. Hope it has been informative. And as I mentioned, I will be releasing new videos every day aimed at beginner Linux users. So if it is something that is of interest, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please do have it in the comment section. Thank you.